All right, so today I have the Sony XM5 series with me. I've been using them for the past couple of months. I finally purchased them quite a bit actually after they were released. And I wanna talk about why you should even buy these and whether they're even worth kind of purchasing, especially if you're coming from the Sony XM4s. Now, I personally did come from the Sony XM4s. There was a gap in between where I used the Soundcore Space One headphones and I didn't really like that sound, especially not when compared to the Sony sound profile. So I did end up purchasing these. They're a direct upgrade for me. I decided not to go back to the XM4s, but instead purchase these instead. And ultimately, when it comes to the sound, it sounds very similar to the XM4s. It's not really much of an upgrade or I didn't really feel like these were kind of new next gen or next kind of upgrade over the XM4s. It sounds pretty similar and I really like that sound profile. But ultimately, the reason why you should go with these is 100% going to be the active noise cancellation, especially when compared to alternatives, which I'll talk about at the end. But the first thing I want to talk about is the sound profile of the XM5, which is probably going to be one of the main reasons why you're purchasing it. And the sound profile still sounds very similar to the XM4s, which is a really good sound profile for Sony. It has that unique Sony profile and they do allow you to kind of tweak it a little bit with the headphones app. You can add some EQ, kind of mess around with the frequencies, add a little bit more bass if you'd like that as well. Now, I personally really like bass, so I've tried pushing this to a 10, but at larger volumes, it just sounds very muffled. It doesn't really sound that great. So I did end up lowering the clear bass and adjusting some of the other frequencies. Now, I am not an audiophile or a sound guy at all. So I just kind of tweaked these around a little bit to see what sounded best to my ears. Here's a kind of screenshot of what my kind of personal sound EQ is so that you can see that I mainly use this one or I just go back to the normal one. But those are the two sound profiles files that I switch between. And when you pair the sound profile with the ANC, the active noise cancellation, you get the best pair of headphones for any work session. You can go ahead and use them at a coffee shop or at home and it'll actually block out any other noise around you. You can use them if you're at a university, you can use them at the library, people can be talking, you can use them as a commuter and other people can be talking on the train or on the bus and it'll be completely fine because you're zoned in on whatever you're listening to and for the most part, I think they're really great for using them as a work session, especially if you like working at a coffee shop, you can throw on these headphones and you won't hear anything else going on around you and you can get some work done and look good doing it too because the design of these headphones is honestly very different from what the xm4s were it's actually more unique than you'd think a lot of other headphones out there you'll see on the headband a lot of the designs are actually flat but the sony xm5s actually went more with a tube or a round kind of headband design which can be a hit or miss i personally don't like it i think that even though these headphones are very lightweight which is great for traveling which is great for longer working sessions that headband can actually put more pressure on the top of your head than a flat headband would and like i said the light weight of these headphones does kind of help out a little bit but at the same time because they are very lightweight it does make them feel cheap a lot of the parts are made of plastic so that means that they're not really that heavy but at the same time they move around a lot you can kind of move them around easier and they do feel a little bit cheaper especially when you compare it to something more along its price range uh, you look at the airpods max that are around within a hundred dollars you look at some other premium options they feel a lot better or a lot more better built but these aren't necessarily badly built they just feel that way because of the weight and then another design difference from the xm4s is also that these xm5s don't actually fold inwards so they're a little bit more difficult to carry around they do include a case but interestingly enough even the case is not as well built as the xm4s I personally like the XM4 case better because it was more of a hard shell, whereas this one is more just kind of a felt or a small backpack. It feels like you can definitely crush it. So if you put it in a bag and put other things on top of it, it's not really protecting the headphones. It feels like the weight of those other devices or those other kind of items that you have in there can crush these headphones. And another part of the design is the branding and the branding is a little bit more minimal. It just like with the Sony XM4s, it just has the Sony name and it has it in this gold or brass plating, which contrasts really well with the black. So you can definitely see it on the black. You can see a little bit less on the light color option, but something that you can also see less on the light color option is going to be those grease stains or those oil stains or fingerprints or whatever you want to call it 
that also was very visible on the XM4s. And with the XM5s, they didn't change the coating. So if you do pick up these headphones with oil on your hands, whether it's just natural oil or you just finished eating or whatever, they will get stained or not really stained, but they do get all of these marks on the back of the headphones, on the band of the headphones, and it just doesn't look great. So I definitely think they could have gone with a different coating for these headphones. But if you're just getting them for the ANC, you're getting them, like I said, for long work sessions, these are going to be great headphones. The sound is fine. The design is fine. Carrying them around, I really think that depends on how big your backpack is or how you're carrying them around. I personally don't really mind that they don't fold. I don't really take them anywhere. They mainly sit here. I actually have a spot for them back there next to my school candy headphones. And then I use them here for long work sessions. I can put them on in the morning and just work for a few hours and then finally go get lunch and come back and put them on again and be completely fine. But I do think that because of the price of these headphones and the design being all plastic, they really can't compete with everything else in its price range, which is why I think that we've seen them go as low as 250 compared to other headphones. But one design that I think they could have changed is that it shouldn't be all plastic, especially at the price that it was released at, at $400. I definitely think that they could have made the adjustment kind of telescoping arm thing be stainless steel to compete more with the premium options that are out there. But one thing that these headphones don't miss with is all the features. Like I said, very similar to the XM4s, you still get the app, you still get the dual connection, you still get the touch controls, which I personally don't like. And if you don't like the touch controls yourself either, you can go into the app itself and turn them off, which is great that they have that option because for someone like myself that doesn't like it, it really is a bothersome feature. So I always turn it off, but you also get Google assistant through the app that you can set. And like I said, you get the EQ, which is really great. If you don't like the sound profile, you want to tweak it a little bit, or you want to set custom ones, which it allows you to, you can go ahead and go to a custom one, custom two, whenever you're listening to a certain type of music. And there are other features within the app that you can use as well. You can go ahead and set up spatial sound. You can find your ear shape and find your EQ, which kind of walks you through uh, the path to find whatever best suits you to whatever sound profile you like best. And then the two top most used features for myself, and I'm sure it's going to be for everyone else, is that you can also use the whole take them off to pause. I think it's a lot easier than doing the whole hand thing to talk to someone else. If you are raising your hand, you might as well take off the ear cuff, pause the music, and then you can speak to the person rather than doing the gesture. But that just might be me. And then you can also set up the whole two different devices so that you can switch between one and the other one. I really like this feature. It's similar to the Apple AirPods where you can do dual device connection or the easy handoff mode where if you turn on your Mac, even though you were listening on your iPhone and you play something on the Mac, it pauses one and plays the other. I think that's a great feature to have. I do like that a lot of headphones are now including this and it still works flawless on the Sony XM5s. All in all, I think these are great headphones, especially with the active noise cancellation. You can get some really good working sessions done. The sound profile is really great. You can even use the EQ to switch it up if you want to. But if you're coming from the XM4s, I don't necessarily think they're worth the upgrade. They work just the same as the XM4s. All of the features are the same as the XM4s. And the sound profile is the same as the XM4s for the most part. You can also get that EQ through the XM4s, through the app. You get the dual connection. You get the auto pause. You get all of that from the same app as you would with the XM5s. The only reason you should upgrade is if you want the different design of the headphones themselves. But if you're coming from another headphones or you don't have headphones at all, I definitely don't think they're worth the $400 MSRP. I think that's a little overpriced. I think usually when they come under $300, that's a better price point for them. I personally got mine at $280 used before all of the sales, but during the holiday season, they did drop all the way to $250. So I definitely think maybe $250 to $300 is a good price for them. Definitely look out for a sale wait if you can or get them as close to 300 as you can if you just need them right now and if you're looking for other alternatives instead i do think the sennheiser momentum 4s are a good alternative the bose quiet comfort ultra are also a good alternative that have great anc you can also go with the airpods max that are a little bit more expensive but the, also the anc is top notch it's right on par with all of these other two headphones actually all these three headphones because the momentum 4s also have really good anc 
And then lastly, if you don't have any headphones and are looking to get some, I do think that the XM4s are a very good alternative to these XM5s. You still get that Sony profile, like I said, you get all of those same features as the XM5s and you still get the folding headphones, the better case, and they sound the exact same. But if you have the extra amount of cash, I definitely would go for these. I like the design a lot better than the XM4s, even though they don't fold, but that's because I personally don't really take them anywhere. What do you guys think? Are the XM5s still worth buying here in 2024? Or do you guys think all the other alternatives are now a better option? Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you guys for watching. Click here to watch another one of my videos, and I will catch you guys in the next one.